Excellent. Well, thank you very much uh, for joining us, everybody. Uh, this is, uh, I think, an excellent opportunity to take advantage of this program and and uh, also uh, financially make sense uh, for our members to take advantage of as well. And hopefully uh, it will uh, have the ability to actually keep some of our young people in community in Sault Ste. Marie by exposing them to uh, the many potential um, job opportunities that, that exist. Obviously, you know, one of the biggest challenges for many youth is just getting their foot in the door. And I think this is an excellent opportunity for us to, uh, to do just that. And, uh, you know, we've got a target of trying to do uh, 54 placements and uh, you're, you're looking at this program is much appreciated. So uh, I want to thank uh, Amy De Palma for joining us today. She's going to run us through uh, how to log on to the system, get in, fill out the appropriate documentation. It is incredibly simple, which is fantastic. They've done a great job uh, at Magnet and Ryerson to produce a product that is really quite simple and easy to use. So thank you very much uh, for joining us. And Amy, thank you for uh, zooming up to Sault Ste. Marie uh, to talk to the membership. And I'll turn it all over to you. Thank you. Um, so before I get started, I'm Amy De Palma. I'm the project coordinator at Magnet working on the Chamber Partnership Initiative. So I have been working closely with Sault Ste. Marie Chamber with uh, Rory, Bob and Don for the past couple of months actually. So they were also well versed in this program. So uh, we're really excited to be here today to share um, the wonderful support that are offered to this program. And before I get started, I just want to pass it over to my colleague, Emily, who will also be presenting on the call today with me. Thank you, Amy. Uh, my name is Emily. I'm also a project coordinator at Ryerson. Uh, I work hey, most of the time on the Magnet business line, so matching businesses to exporting opportunities and growth opportunities, but I'm also supporting the Chamber Initiative when needed, so happy to meet everyone today. Great, Emily. Uh, we'll just get started with a short video that will go over what the Chamber Partnership Initiative is. Um, and for those that are not familiar, uh, this is all about the Student Work Placement Program, which provides job opportunities for young talent. So as Rory mentioned, uh, it's really taking a negative of COVID and turning into a positive and being able to show the youth that are going to be home right now and have not left home to go to school, but there are wonderful opportunities within their local community to provide that work integrated learning for them. Introducing the Chamber Partnership Initiative, supporting chambers and their members. Boost your business with student talent. Wage subsidies of up to $7,500 are available to employers who hire Canadian post-secondary students. Student work integrated learning experiences can help businesses or local healthcare providers with support for project-based work in digital marketing, market research, customer sales and support, technology support, accounting and finance, frontline healthcare services, and more. Tap into a skilled and energetic student talent pool with Canada's largest student recruitment platform. Reach students at more than 85 Canadian post-secondary institutions with one job posting. Your account also connects you to updates on funding programs and COVID-19 recovery resources. Reach a national audience of job seekers and grow your business with one platform. Join your chamber portal powered by Magnet to get started. Okay, wonderful. So the agenda for today is we'll talk about what the actual chamber partnership initiative that is being offered to you by uh, the Sault Ste. Marie Chamber and how it's addressing the economic challenges that we are all have been facing for the majority of this year and uh, into early next year and the financial supports that are going to be offered to you through the student work placement program, as well as a few different SWIFT employer scenarios. That'll be one of the key pieces of the presentation that will really outline how SWIFT is um, not a one size shoe, one shoe fits all program. It really is a program that can be tailored to your individual needs as an employer. We'll talk about the separate uh, member supports um, for being a member of your chamber. And then we will actually take you through how to apply for funding. And as Rory said, um, even though it is a government funded program, 
the steps are very easy um, and your uh, chamber will be able to offer you a step-by-step -step guide with screenshots as well as a video of how to do the application. So you really have so much support at your fingertips that are offered to you by, that, by them. So just a little bit about the Chamber Partnership Initiative. Um, we refer to it as CPI and it really is about ad addressing the economic recovery uh, that we've all been facing due to COVID-19. So right now, many um, SMEs have been struggling with either keeping their doors open as well as transitioning their uh, services to an online platform in order, in order to be able to be successful still. So this really is an offering that's provided to you in partnership with the Ontario Chamber of Commerce, Magnet, and with your Sault Ste. Marie Chamber of Commerce. Uh, it offers you a suite of technology and resources at no cost. So you will be able to receive your own um, login information through the Sault Ste. Marie Chamber portal where you'll have access to all of these funding programs um, economic recovery programs, being able to hire the student talent, as well as be able to use a regular job board like Indeed, for example, for free, um, all through the partnership that they're offering their members. Uh, in specific today, we're going to talk about the student work placement program uh, that is able to provide you as an employer with up to 75% or $7,500 of a student's salary during a term of school for the work integrated learning component. So again, this really is um, a program, it's federally funded. There's $5 million to go across all of Canada. Um, and then it is in partnership with the Ontario Chamber of Commerce and Magnet across the country. And we are targeting um, our partners through these chambers to be able to assist their members to deliver this financial um, support to their employers and students through their local communities. So uh, the program is providing those wage subsidies to the student work uh, placement program, uh, which assist students by providing them with meaningful uh, work integrating learning opportunities. I think that right now, providing our students that are still in school that really wonderful on-site experience for the program that they're studying, they are passionate, they're driven, they want to be able to finish school and have a direction. So it really is all about educate, educating our youth and preparing them for the workforce in the future so that when they have graduated from their three or four year degree, they have a sense of direction. They're not left wondering where to go. They've already made those wonderful connections and they've been in a program where they've been able to learn skills on site and not just with their heads in the book. So it really is a wonderful program that is extremely important to continuing to to build that success within our students and within our, our local businesses. So the student work placement program um, in particular, which is uh, one of the most important offerings of this partnership is going to provide you the members of the Sault Ste. Marie Chamber, the opportunity to hire a student and have that salary wage subsidy of up to $7,500 or 75% of the salary. Um, each semester or each um, placement time coincides with the student's semester. So for example, we are on December 14th, we are still in the fall term. So the fall term runs from September 1st until December 31st. So if you as an employer have already hired a student during these months and you've been paying them, you would be able to apply today to receive this funding and have that salary between September 1st and December 31st retroactively paid to you right now. The winter term will start January 1st and run until the end of March 31st. And then they combine the spring summer semester into two. So this is the most important slide that I was referring to earlier that really shows you can tailor this SWIP program to your individual needs. You, uh, for the first example, we have Bob's Bake Shop and they're looking to hire a full-time student to do a graphic design entire website revamp for the full winter semester. So they're going to hire somebody from January 1st until March 31st and they're going to pay them $10,000 for those three months, they will be eligible to receive $7,500 back for that salary paid out. The second example is a retirement home. They're hiring a student who is looking to complete their field placement. So students who are becoming PSWs have a field placement component. Many students don't normally get paid for this component. And this is a wonderful opportunity to be able to provide this PSW student with that work integrated learning component as well as being able to hire that assistance that all of these long-term care homes are currently dying for right now during COVID-19. So for this scenario, 
they're going to pay the student $5,000 for in total for the work throughout the semester. So they don't have a, a limit of 25 hours a week to 45 to 40 hours a week. They just know that they're going to pay them $5,000 for their field placement and the employer will receive that $3,750 back in their wage subsidies. And the last example is Molly's Marketing. This example shows um, that you can hire a student for a very short-term basis to do one particular task. So they're going to hire from February 1st until March 15th. So again, that still fits within that winter semester and that's their busy season. So if you as an employer know that January, February or February, March is your busy season because you have you need help with your books or doing your finances, for example, to get ready for tax season. It's a great opportunity for you to hire a student to assist with that area of your business and receive that wage subsidy back. So for this um, Molly's marketing, for that very short term basis, they're going to pay the student $3,500 and receive $2,625 back in the wage subsidies. So the additional supports that are offered to you, the chamber members of Sault Ste. Marie Chamber is that every step of the way you have the team at your chamber as well as Emily and myself. And um, there are four of other members of the CPI team as well as a team of 20 who are dedicated just to assisting with SWIP applications. So you will have um, help every step of the way. The first part of the application that I'll show you today is to receive the employer eligibility and um, signing up your student if you have one already. So you'll have that support so you don't ever have to feel like you are left alone completing the government application. You also have access to Canada's largest student recruitment platform to find a student. So if you have a student at a local college or university in mind, or if you have a coworker or a neighbor who has a student that's looking to be hired, that is wonderful. If you have no access to finding a student or you have a very specific niche that you need a student to assist with, you would be able to use Outcome Campus Connect free. You make one job posting for what you need, just like any regular job posting. The difference is you will reach over a million students across Canada and over 85 post-secondary institutions with your post. So you have the ability to select the program of study that the student is coming from, as well as the schools that you want to target. So if you're in a position that you are able to have a student working remotely and you can hire a student out in UBC, it's a great way to know that the student that you've connected with is already pre-vetted. They are in a post-secondary education institution and they are in a co-op program as well. I'm going to pass it over to Emily uh, for, for the second half of the presentation and then we'll pause for questions at the end. Thank you, Amy. So um, on the slide here, now you'll see how to apply for the funding. So there's a bit of a process. So to begin, you would create an account on the Sault Ste. Marie's Chamber portal. And once you log in, um, you activate your account, you log into the portal, you will see um, a carousel at the top and it um, promotes applying for a SWIP. Um, application. You simply just click that and it brings you directly to the website where you can um, begin the application process. Um, and then once you've filled out your general business information, you are then going to secure student talent. Um, and as Amy mentioned, it could be someone you already previously know and you know you want to hire the student, or you can also utilize the Outcome Campus Connect um, to connect with student talent um, all across Canada. Um, to secure them for that placement. Then the student fills out their portion of the application. They will be asked to um, provide basic information and upload documents pertaining to proof of enrollment, um, their Canadian citizenship, and so forth. Um, and then that once that portion of the application is completed, it is sent to the review team to ensure that they have uploaded all um, proper documentation. And then once the application is moved along, you fill out things like terms of conditions and all that, you will submit the student's first and last pay stub. Um, and then it will be determined how much you will receive in the wage subsidy, whether it's, you know, you've paid the student over $10,000 and you'll be getting up to 7,500 or 75% of what the wage um, the student was paid. And then um, once all that information is um, provided, you will receive your payment once the placement is complete and you should receive the invoice uh, 
the time frame is 45 to 60 days after the student's placement has been completed. So what are the next steps? How do you get started? Well, you're gonna connect with your local chamber and you're gonna determine your SWIP needs. As Rory had mentioned, the goal is 54 um, placements for the chamber. Um, by all means, that does not have to be met. Um, as many as possible is excellent. Um, but it's good to have that conversation out in the open so there can be an understanding of the allotment of how many um, placements each employer wants to use. You can use, um, there's no limit per employer. You can use, hire as many students as you'd like, as many as your business may need. Um, and then, as I mentioned, you're going to go create your um, account on the portal and begin the application process. It's, we try to keep it all in one area so it is um, a seamless experience for businesses. And I believe we're going to pause for questions here, if there is any. Um, we will be going over in the next section eligibility requirements. So if there is any questions pertaining to that, that may be answered um, in the next portion. But we will pause for any questions now. Hi, it's Tiffany from the city. Um, so we sign up through the Chamber of Commerce website or the Magnet website? You're, Just for you're going to sign up. Yep, yeah, you're going to sign up through the Sault Ste. Marie website. They actually have a direct link under resources to the Magnet Student Work Placement Program, which I'll, I'll show you um, in the second half of the presentation. And then you'll create your own um, login, and then that's where you'll be able to sign up for the SWIP program. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other, I see there's some questions in the chat. Oh, no, not for me. Okay, we'll move right along. <laughs> okay, so first is the eligibility for employers. So employers must be a registered Canadian business, nonprofit, hospital, long-term care facility, or post-secondary institution. So universities, colleges, so forth. Federal, provincial, territorial, and municipal governments do not qualify, so they cannot hire a student and then apply for a wage subsidy. Um, employers need to be committed to paying the student for the role and providing a quality learning experience. So you want to ensure that it aligns with, you know, the maybe the program they're taking at school and ensuring that they're getting, um, they're really getting some skills that they can use in the future. And it's really um, quality learning experience for them. And you do have to um, have the financial capacity to pay the student for the duration of the placement because you are provided the wage subsidy upon completion of the placement. So the student has to be paid. The employers are not provided incremental payments during um, the student's placement. And mo recently, um, the program is always evolving due to um, the economic climate. So the government has introduced some changes to the program, um, and that allows employers to have the flexibility to postpone placement start dates to avoid rescinding placements. Um, you are able to apply for funding before you have finalized your student selection. So as I mentioned, you could complete the first process of the application where it's just information about your business and you don't have to have secured a student at that point. But it's just to get the um, subsidies are issued at a first come first serve basis. So a lot of times employers want to get on there and get their information in so they have their application started. Students are able to work from home. They can work 100% um, remotely. So you could hire a student in another province if they meet the needs for your business. Um, Post-secondary institutions are now able to be employer as long as they're offering meaningful placement to students. Hospitals and long-term care facilities are eligible for it to be employers and uh, the government has set aside 1500 placements specifically for students working in hospitals or long-term care facilities. So eligibility for the students. The student must be registered as a domestic student in a recognized Canadian post-secondary institution. So this includes Canadian citizens, permanent residences, or a person who has refugee protection. So um, often there is one of the pain points right now is you cannot hire an international student that is currently in Canada on a work permit. They are not eligible for the program. 
Um, they must have a work integrated learning component as a part of their program. Um, work integrated learning comes in many different flavors. Um, we may see that later on in um, the demo of the Outcome Campus Connect. It could be a co-op, it could be an internship, uh, work study, research assistant, um, varying different degrees. So um, as long as they have that as a part of their uh, course during the semester of the application, um, they are able to apply. And a student can be in a full-time or part-time program for any program of study. So um, it doesn't, some of the um, organizations that administer the wage subsidy, students have to be part of maybe an engineering program, uh, not for this program. They can be part of any program at all and they don't need to be full-time. Full -time. They can um, be only enrolled part-time at, uh, at school. And we'll just go to the next slide and eligibility for the placement. So um, much like the student, the placement can also be full or part-time. You do not have to hire a student to work 40 hours a week. If you only need someone for um, 20 hours a week, that is fine as well. Stacking with provincial tax credits is allowed, but it is the responsibility of the employer to ensure um, that the specific um, programs can be stacked together. And we do always advise to consult a tax professional um, before you apply. And please note that wage subsidies cannot be counted toward any tax credits, only the actual paid wages. Partial government funds from provincial, territorial, municipal sources are permitted, but you can only get funding through SWIP program for non-governmental sources um, that you are paying the students. So if you are receiving 60% funding from a provincial program, you are only allowed to claim 40, the other 40% of wages you have paid the student under the SWIP program. A placement cannot be combined with other, other sources of federal funding. So um, we have had some incidents where um, employers have then used the Canadian Emergency Wage Subsidy. You cannot then use the um, SWIP program for the same student. Um, same for Canada Summer Jobs and any other um, delivery partners. So as I mentioned, there's, there is um, several delivery partners of the student work placement program, you cannot um, apply with Magnet and then also apply to another one for the same student, it's just one. And as I mentioned, funding is um, first come first serve. So it's always good to make sure you get your application in as soon as you know um, you wanna take a part um, of this program. Wonderful, thank you so much, Emily. Um, are there any questions before I dive right in to show you how to sign up uh, through the Sault Ste. Marie Chamber uh, website? easy group today. <laughs> I like that. Okay, so your chamber has done a wonderful job of making this very simple for you uh, to navigate. So when you jump onto the website, when you click on resources, as always, they have all of the programs that they are currently um, working with listed there. At the very top, you'll see the student work placement program. So you can sim simply click there and that takes you to this page that will give you all of the very pertinent information as to what the student work placement program is. So if um, I will share, Emily and I will share the, pro the deck that we have presented to you today with uh, Rory, Don, and Bob, but if you just wanna click on here, it, they've done such a wonderful job of telling you all the important information about SWIP and how to use Outcome Campus Connect to your advantage. Uh, they even listed the eligibility, so you don't have to Google search anything, they have really done such a wonderful job of putting all of those resources right at your fingertips. So for you to get started, you are going to click here or click here to get started. And that takes you to their very own Sault Ste. Marie Chamber of Commerce portal. You will be creating an account and signing on as an employer organization because you are an employer who's a member of the chamber. Unfortunately, I was not able to actually sign up on the Sault Ste. Marie website yesterday. So I'm just going to take you to, to um, what it would look like after you'd signed up. As Emily had mentioned, the very first thing you're going to see is the student work placement program. So you don't have to go again and click on a bunch of things. It's right there in front of you. Uh, so you would hit apply now. And this takes you right to Outcome Campus Connect. 
you're able to, sorry, I'm just gonna hit the dashboard for a second there. Okay, there we go. Good morning, Amy. <laughs> this is what you'll, you'll see. And it will show you um, if you've applied to any other placements before this, um, if there have been any placements that um, have been approved and so forth. And of course, we're gonna have technical difficulties because I'm doing a live demo right now. That's usually the way, the way it goes. <laughs> so I'll just click back there. So it takes you right here to apply for the placement that you are looking to apply for. It has fall 2020 listed because that's what we're in. You can also apply for the winter semester as well as the summer semester well in advance. So just for today's purposes, I'm going to apply for the winter term. I would hit next. Now I'm going to enter my organization details. So I'm just going to give myself, we'll just say I work at my, oh, we'll say that I work at, if my computer decides to work today, magnet. I would enter my website, uh, the size of my organization. Uh, if I've ever hired a student before in this previous year, which I have not, I could look up my address very quickly. And it pre-populates for me. And then you just complete your postal code. One J zero. Um, contact information. My last name. Uh, my phone number. I always just make things up <laughs> to make it easier for the demo. Uh, my email address, abc at, let's say hotmail.com today. And then is my employer of record a post-secondary institution? If so, then I would describe uh, my rationale for applying. Then you would hit next. This is where you're going to enter your placement details. So the first two things that you need to have readily available to begin your application to receive eligibility as an employer is your employment details, which you all know, and then to know what your details are of your placement. So think of it as a regular job posting. If you are looking to put this on your local um, job board within your community, what are the details of the job? So you're going to enter the type of will. When you click on this uh, arrow, it will give you all the different types of work integrated learning. So are you looking for um, work experience? Are you looking to hire somebody who's doing a co-op right now? Are you looking to hire someone who's doing an applied research project because you need assistance within your, maybe you're a medical uh, laboratory and you need someone to assist with that field of uh, uh, research or uh, field placement and research on the project. For today, I'm going to hit co-op. So that means that I will be finding a student who is in a co-op to apply for this job. So I'm going to say that I am looking for a marketing coordinator. And then I would do my job description as normal. Um, you're going to put the details of the job. Is it, um, you're looking for a student who's in a marketing position. Um, and you could say that they would be, what duties are they doing? They're rebuilding my entire online website. I would like to include e-commerce as well as be in charge of my social media. So you'd be putting those details into your job description again, as you would a re regular job posting. So many of you may even be copying and pasting this from a template that you've already used in the past to hire for a position, which is quite similar. So today I'm just going to say uh, design website and be in charge of social, if I could type social, oh my goodness, social media you'd enter how long you need the student for. So I said that I'm looking for a student for the winter term, but I don't think I need them for any of January. I think the start date that I would need is in February. So I'm gonna say that I need them for uh, 12 weeks, 12 weeks. How many hours a week? I don't need them for full time. Um, I'm looking to hire a student for 25 hours per week and I'm going to pay them. Again, it's up to you. There is no, I've had uh, employers reach out and say, what is the right answer to put for hourly wage? There is no right answer. Obviously it needs to be meet minimum wage requirements, but there is no attractive number. It's whatever you feel comfortable with paying the student to provide you with this work. Again, you enter your address because they always wanna to check to ensure 
that this is an actual legitimate business that they would be sending a student to work for. And my start date is going to be February 1st. And their end date is going to be, I think I put 12 weeks, but we're gonna say March 31st. There we go. If this is a, you're an employer and you're in the healthcare field or you would be clicking this button on because as Emily mentioned, there are 1500 placements that have been specifically set aside for that uh, area. If your student is, is going to work remotely, you would click this on as well. With COVID-19, that's one of the inclusions that they've made to the program. Students can work remotely. They can also work remotely temporarily or they can work on site if that's what your business needs right now. So I'm going to say that my student is able to work remotely. You'd enter your information as their supervisor or maybe you have somebody else who will be their direct supervisor and their email address. Oh my gosh, sorry. And then you'd hit next. And this takes you to the student details. So as an employer, you have the ability to stop right here and that would be completing your employer eligibility. That gets your foot in the door, you're in the queue, you'll receive um, an answer within two to three weeks if you've met the eligibility requirements as an employer. So this is where you would stop if you have not found a student yet. And there's no, like I always say, if you're interested in the program, this is the best part to complete right away because you are now in line to receive your eligibility. And in the meantime, during those two to three weeks, you might be using Outcome Campus Connect to post a job to find a student, or you're reaching out to your chamber or to a local college university to their co-op offices to find a student who is available, or maybe you're matching with a student within your community that you've met through friends, for example. So right now, if I had my student already, if I knew I was going to hire my neighbor Emily's daughter, Sally, then I would toggle this button to the right and enter all of the information about the student, okay? It, since I don't have my student yet, I'm gonna keep it closed, hit next. <laughs> and then I would hit next again. The documents section, you would not need to worry about at this moment because later on, you'll be uploading the student documents um, that pertain to, as Emily mentioned, their federal ID being a passport or a driver's license, or sorry, not a driver's license, a passport or a birth certificate, proving that they are a Canadian citizen or a permanent resident, as well as their um, things to provide proof of enrollment. So a lot of students are able to just download their course selection that they've taken from the beginning of their schooling up until the end. That's what I would suggest having your students do because then you get to, as a reviewer on the SLIP team, we're able to see that the student was actually enrolled during the time that they completed their placement. But again, as an employer, you don't need to worry about the document section right now. If you have not found a student, you would hit next. And that's the end. You would review your placement opportunity, your organization information, that took about, I know I didn't put great detail into my job description, but if I had, it would have been an extra five minutes maybe. So you're able to complete the eligibility step within 10 minutes. You'd hit finish. I'm not going to right now because I don't want to actually post <laughs> apply for SWIP through, through the Sault Ste. Marie Chamber portal. Um, you would hit finish and then you would receive an e email, let your application has been received and that you'd be contacted within those two to three weeks to uh, to notify you of your eligibility. Does anybody have any questions about the application process for the student work placement funding through the Sault Ste. Marie portal? Um, yeah, I guess I have a couple of questions of about the pro about the job type. Yeah. Um, so I, I have an engineering business. Um, so co-op would be the kind of normal, I guess process we would we would go through but um some of the things we've been looking for are more business or marketing related help um so and i'm just going from memory here but there was like project and um there was a couple other options there is since you were saying like co-op is very specific about you know who can apply 
Um, do those other designations have any kind of criteria with them as well? So it will all depend, on, as you mentioned, it's a great question, on the program that the student is taking. So for example, a student in psychology, their, their placement is going to be called a, a practicum. It's not going to be called a co-op. So when you choose co-op, it will limit the programs of study that you would be able to find that pool of students for. Uh, most businesses and financial students, I believe their placement is considered um, a work experience program. But again, if you have uh, contact with a student in, in finance or you're looking for a student in finance, the, the college or the university will be able to tell you what work integrated learning opportunity to choose to find a student under those degrees. And when you use Outcome Campus Connect, if you choose placement, you'll be able to see right away how many schools you're, you're going to. Oh, I've only matched with three schools. Maybe I should have picked a different type of will to, to cast my net wider to a, a, a broader range of schools for that program. And that, I love that you, you've already figured out that just because you're an engineering company that you, you need the assistance of the finances. So you're going to be wanting to hire a student in finance or business, not a student necessarily in an engineering program. And I think that's one of the hardest concepts for employers to understand right away. Like again, just because you're a engineering company, you don't need to hire a student in engineering because that's not where you need the help. You need the help with your finances. So wonderful. Okay. So really we should look at the job posting website probably first before we fill out the application. I think that the most important thing to do is apply for the funding. Um, if, you, if you, for example, click co-op and you end up hiring a student who's in a work experience, it's not going to defer you from becoming eligible. When your student completes their details, all they're providing is that piece of paper that shows they were enrolled in some work integrated learning program. So they wouldn't say to you, well, Rob, you chose a co-op, but your student's actually doing a field placement. You're now no longer going to be eligible. <laughs> they just need okay. to, to show that they have that work integrated learning component. Okay. And then I guess the second question is around the, the summer term. Um, so do they, they need to be enrolled in school in the summer? Or, or not? No, so another great question, um, because most, I know I personally did not take any classes over the summertime, but I'm still in school. So if the student is not physically enrolled in a program and paying fees during the spring summer, they would have to provide proof that they were in school during the winter term and will be going back to school again in the fall. So that shows that they haven't graduated in the winter and you're now paying a graduate because then you wouldn't qualify. Emily and I have been reviewing a lot of applications recently on the other end, and that has been one of the major pain points through a summer application is students didn't tell their employers they were graduating in winter. So an employer has paid them for the summertime, and then when we receive their proof of eligibility, the student is no longer in school in the fall. So uh, very important to ensure that you, you ask these questions up front if you're not using Outcome Campus Connect. If you're using Outcome Campus Connect, any student like you will match with is pre-vetted to meet these eligibility requirements. Any other questions? No. Would anybody be interested in seeing how to use Outcome Campus Connect to find a student? Yeah. Okay. We have, is that okay? We have, we have 15 more minutes. Would you guys be okay if I went through that? Wonderful. Just going to pull that up again. And I'm going to move this box over. Okay. So this is um, our demo environment. Um, so again, if any of the dates are wrong, I apologize. But as you can see, it, would look, it looks exactly the same as the Sault Ste. Marie portal did. Um, but on this one, I'm able to sign in to it. Um, and I'm going to click on, but I'm going to look for, we'll just do it this way again, apply now. And it should, perfect. So this is, you can see here, 
On the right hand side, apply for SWIP subsidy. So that's what we just went through. Um, on the left hand side, post new. So now this is where I'm going to be posting a job in search of a student for my SWIP placement that I just applied for. So it's all in one place, which is amazing. It looks very similar. It has the opportunity wizard on the left hand side as well. And the first thing it asks you is what type of opportunity you're recruiting for. To Rob's question, if you ever are unsure of what type of will you think you're looking for, you would be clicking the arrows and it gives you a definition of all of them. So part-time job, it tells you, it gives you definitions of everything. So you, you can reassure yourself that you are clicking the correct one. For today, again, I'm going to click co-op. I'd hit next. And I'll, again, for the sake of the demo, I'll click that I'm going to be hiring for the winter term. And this is where you get to target a field of, or area of study. So as Emily mentioned earlier, there are other delivery partners of the SWIP program, but they are really only focused on one specific area of education. So they might only be uh, accepting students who are in a tech um, program or an engineering program. With SWIP through Magnet OCC in your chamber, you can hire a student that is taking any program of study. It's not something one specific area. So it really does open up so many doors to your community and to your students. So I'm going to pick again for today, but I'm looking for somebody in the health and related fields. After I click that, all of the programs that fall under the health and related fields category will drop down for me. So if I am a long-term care facility, I now have the ability to scroll through and say, I don't need somebody who's taking psychology. So I'm gonna click off that program. I don't think that I need somebody who's taking um, dental support services for the sake of my, my job posting. So I could toggle that off. So you really have the ability to hone in on the specific programs of study that you're looking for. Just keep in mind, the more specific you get, the fewer matches you will have, which can be a great thing if you're looking for a very specific uh, place of assistance, or you can cast your net far and wide and keep all of the programs on because you know they fall under the health category. I would hit next. On the top right hand side, it tells me I'm currently targeting 44 schools. Then I can scroll through and see the list of schools across Canada that I will target with this one job posting that I'm going to create. So again, I now have the ability to hone in on specific schools. If I look through the list and I decide, I don't think that I, I want to um, offer this position to students that are outside of Ontario, for example, you want to try to keep it more local, you can, you can toggle off specific schools. If you only want to target a specific school, you can hit all of them off and then just click the ones on that you would like to, to keep. I'm going to hit next. And this again looks very similar. This would be essentially a copy and paste to the same job opportunity placement opportunity that you put for the funding application. You'd be putting in the same details here. Uh, you're going to tell us about the opportunity, um, the name of the position, if it's on site, remote, or temporarily remote. You're going to tell us the number of positions, the salary, salary amount, if you're paying them hourly the hours week. So as you can see, it, the similarities, they match up. It, we had to talk about how many hours they were working a week, um, what, how, what we were paying them each hour. Uh, we enter address before uh, we've entered the job description. So you're literally copying and pasting. So it does make it much easier for you. Uh, so this would take again about another 10 minutes to complete. So let's say 20 minutes in total to find a student and to apply for the funding. You'd enter their qualifications. So if you're looking for a student such as um, example, uh, you'd be putting those here. Any skills and highlights, application instructions. If you're looking to hire somebody to revamp your marketing website, maybe you want to see a portfolio. So you're going to put in here to submit a portfolio to with their application on the last uh, web design or brand marketing what they what they did for one of their school projects. You get to decide how you would like your responses to be received. So you can receive them through your employer website. I always suggest the best way is either via your email or via Outcome Campus Connect because you will get a notification to your email that you have a new match on Outcome Campus Connect. 
Again, I just choose email because I feel like we're all on our emails all the time these days. <laughs> so it's probably the best way to receive uh, the important information that, that you need to know that you have a match for your job posting. You, I'm not going to hit next because I didn't fill anything out, but you would hit next. And that's the end of your job posting. You'll again receive a notification that your posting has gone for approval. The postings go to our team over at Who Plus You, who are responsible for the technology of Outcome Campus Connect in Orbis. And they need to vet them to make sure that this is actually a real job posting. Uh, we're dealing with students and hiring students right now. So I just want to ensure that you are an eligible employer and that this is a vetted um, job posting. And then you'll, again, within 24 hours, you'll see your job posting inside your Outcome Campus Connect. Any questions about the job posting? Um, I think it's very similar to, as I mentioned, the funding posting. Um, it, there's a lot of steps, but it's very similar steps. It's as long as you know the information, you know your certain needs, you really will be able to fly through both these applications. There's no harm in applying for the eligibility as an employer and maybe being unsure at that point um, what it is that you're looking for. If you know the position that you're looking for, I always suggest applying as soon as possible um, because the funding is limited and we want to ensure that you are able to, to receive that eligibility sooner rather than later. Um, again, if you are sitting here saying, oh, I've been hiring a student since April, um, they're still in school, would I be eligible for the payment from September to December? Yes, you would. Go on, apply now. Uh, you'd enter your student details because you already know them because you have your student and you'd be eligible to receive that retroactive payment from September 1st. And that's it for us. <laughs> Hi, this is Wendy Dota. I'm just wondering, I have a quick question for you just to clarify uh, one of the things. So you were saying that if you've applied for Canada Summer Jobs or Summer Experience Program, you can't add this on to it as well. So in the, situation, in, in the situation where you've done it this summer and that term has ended for that employee, but you've kept the student on part-time throughout the rest of the, the year, can you now apply for it? Or is it because they've, they've, they've done it in the summer that you, you can't apply it to that student? No, it's a completely new semester. So because you can, you can hire um, if you've hired somebody for Canada summer jobs, that's fine. If you are now going to use the wage subsidy for the fall semester, it's a different, different term. So you would be okay. If you've hired a student for the Canada summer jobs and you want to now hire an additional student for SWIFT, that is also perfectly acceptable. It's just that you would not be able to combine them with the same student during the same time. Excellent. Thank you. No problem. Any other questions? Well, maybe. Yeah. Um, hi, sorry, it's uh, Robert here. Just, um, <clears throat> just a clarification. If we were not sure yet about January, you sort of mentioned this maybe, but um, if, for example, I wasn't ready yet for January to hire somebody, but uh, February was a possibility, um, but I'm not going to know maybe for a couple more weeks. Would I uh, do as you suggested, register our organization? Um, and then how flexible are those work terms? Can I still, can I start in February and does it have to end at the end of that particular time? Or are these just induction times or how does that schedule work? Yeah, you are able to apply. So as long as the student that you're hiring works in between January 1st and March 31st, you're eligible. So if you know you're going to be hiring somebody for February, apply now and say that their start date is February. You also have the ability to, to edit your, your application dates after you've been, after you've been approved. Um, but if you know you're gonna be hiring somebody in February, then you'd be eligible to receive that uh, financial support from February until March 31st. If your student started in February and continued past March 31st into the spring summer, that you'd be eligible up till March 31st, then you would submit an, a new application for the spring term for the same student to be eligible to receive the payment for, for them continuing on through April and May and June, for example. Okay, so um, 
when the student actually works for us is not as important. Uh, that's, that's flexible, obviously. It's just a matter of reapplying if um, they're crossing over the two terms. Of course. So a great example is right now, um, a lot of like farm shops or hobby, her hobby farms are have been really busy for just December and they will continue to be busy in January. So they would have applied for funding just for one month for winter from January to, de or sorry, from December, just the month of December. Then they would reapply again for funding for one month from January till February for the next term. And that's completely, that's acceptable 100%. Great. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, Amy and Emily, you guys did a great job. Thank you so much. Thank you for having us. You guys have such a wonderful team at the Sault Ste. Marie Chamber. They have been attending learning sessions every week for the past 10 weeks with us on Wednesdays. So they are extremely dedicated and I know that they are very excited to be able to provide their community with this opportunity. So please reach out to them. We're here to support them and you as you guys continue forward on this journey. And we're just really excited to be working with the Sault Ste. Marie Chamber. Well, we appreciate that, Emily and uh, Amy. So thanks very much, everybody. Um, as, uh, as Amy had pointed out, uh, just go to ssmcoc.com and you'll be able to find Don's uh, posted in the chat room there uh, where you're able to find the details on this program. And, and obviously, feel free to uh, reach out to us if you have any questions. Just note, we may take a little while to get back to you because we are closing the office for holiday season. And also we'll be redistributing this video so that you'll have it as a reference point as well. And certainly recommend the program to any of your colleagues, your customers, and that, you know, the more people we have taking advantage of this program, the better off it is for our community. So thank you very much, everybody. Greatly appreciate it. And uh, happy holidays to every single one of you and your families. Enjoy the holiday season. Thanks very much and thanks for joining us. Take care. Bye. Thank you.